Georgia has been on quite a journey over the last 10 years, not least a huge anti-corruption drive, massive investment in infrastructure, and of course, the conflict with Russia. Its mountainous north is still defined by relations with its gigantic neighbour, with two areas still attempting to break away, and others until recently notorious for their lawlessness and banditry. By comparison, the capital Tbilisi seems like a different country, with its tranquil old town and thriving arts and culture scene. But which is the real Georgia? My journey begins in the ancient capital, where I'll discover why a burgeoning hip-hop scene holds a mirror to Georgia's dramatic politics. I'll try out my pitch and timbre with the locals in Europe's highest village, before descending for some romance at what some regard as the Las Vegas of the Black Sea coast. taste of the high life, Tbilisi style, and one of the steepest funicular rides in the world. When it comes to charm, elegance and individuality, the capital of Georgia, Tbilisi, has got to be one of Europe's most underrated cities. And this hilltop view perfectly captures that. Mind you, like the rest of Georgia and indeed the whole region, this city has been through some troubled times. And it feels like everyone has a story to tell. Like the driver of this newly refurbished funicular who arrived in the city in 1991 as a refugee from South Ossetia. The life was very difficult in those times. Very difficult. I mean, uh, it was not safe to walk in the, in the streets, you know. Now, compared to those times, you know, people look much happier, they are active socially, you know. In the recent years, especially this year, we have a lot of, a lot of tourists. They also look happy, you know. <laughs> they look happy when, when they see us happy also, so. <laughs> Tbilisi is home to a third of Georgia's population. You couldn't blame them for having a siege mentality here. The city was invaded 40 times between the 7th and 18th centuries. The most recent invasion of Georgia by Russian troops in 2008 over the South Ossetian crisis did set progress and tourism back. But now, after the recent landmark parliamentary election, there's hope the next invasion will be tourists. And this is the new man at the helm, Prime Minister Bidzina Ivan Ishvili, who has a proper rags-to-riches story and at the end of 2012 fought on a populist ticket and snatched victory. He owns a zoo, a vast art collection. Oh, and he has a pop star son to boot called Bera who lovingly provided the hip-hop soundtrack to his father's campaign. It's not just the sons of billionaire Georgian politicians that use rap to express their views. There's a grassroots, authentic rap scene here too. This group of friends are part of a new generation, more pro-American than their parents, with English rather than Russian as a second language. But they say they're fiercely anti-commercial. I'm rapping about everything, but I'm rapping about to make people think 
to open their eyes to do something kind and good to help each other. Levan, stage name Sirius, actually lived in the USA during childhood and now believes his beloved home city is emerging from a long, dark tunnel. I feel more comfortable. I feel like I'm free. I'm a human right now. I think we were like rats back in the days because we, we didn't have the light. We didn't have water. You were like rats? Yeah, 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 underground. We were living underground. I guess part of the change that has gone through Georgia in the last 10 years is that I can see the nightlife now, like in, in Tbilisi. It, it, people are actually going out. Definitely, yes. There were, there were guys running, in, I mean, the, back in the days, in the 90s, there were guys running with machine guns, guns in the streets. They were robbing everyone. Actually, yeah, there are changes. In the upmarket paved area in the old town, Tbilisi is in carefree mood, reinforcing two messages, that this city presents a very European face of Georgia and that people here do love to party. So now it's time to head out of the big city in the southeast of the country and head diametrically across Georgia to the northwest and the mountainous region near the Russian border. Now, practically speaking, neither trains nor planes are a viable option for this journey. So it looks like we're going to rely on the trusty van. And in actual fact, the road infrastructure for this journey is pretty good. India. This is a 182 kilometer stretch of new motorway. Not quite complete. Okay. Minor problem, uh, not potholes, but um, I think a rock that's just fallen down from the mountain has caused us to have a flat tyre. So uh, we're going to try and fix that as soon as possible, but I guess that is one of the hazards of roads pretty well anywhere, but I think particularly here in mountainous Georgia. <laughs> For God's sake, hurry up! <laughs> We're now approaching Mestia in the wild western highlands of the Swaneti region, often regarded as the spiritual capital of Georgia. OK, so putting aside dodgy drivers, potholes and flat tyres, there was, until recently, a far more sinister hazard for travellers on this infamous road. Banditry. In fact, highway robbery. This road was the scene of many a terrible car crash and also the main hunting ground for criminals. In 2005, huge swathes of the police force were sacked in an anti-corruption purge. Ilya feels many of his colleagues were unfairly targeted, but he himself survived the cull. In the years that followed, serious organised crime also reduced dramatically. These days, more parochial matters dominate police time. Otherwise, Ilya's main duty is to ensure tourists have a secure and safe visit to Mestia, an area earmarked by the government to become the Swiss Alps or the Caucasus, serving Eastern Europe and the Middle East. Uh, 
ესათუის დანაშაული, მზიმე დანაშაული მეხედულობაში თავის როზე აღიკვეთა. იყო პრობლემები იარაღის შეიარაღების ხრივ, იყო პრობლემები ტრანსპორტის ხრივ, ტექნიკური საშუალებების ხრივ. დღეს ყველა ეს პრობლემა მოხსნილია. აბსოლუტურად ყველა პრობლემა მოხსნილია. გამომდინარე აქედან ეს შედეგზეც არის ასახული დღევანდელობაზე. ფაქტიურად მესტეის რაიონის რაიონულ სამართველოში გაუხსნელი დანაშაული არ რიცხება დღეის ხეობით. Tourist numbers in Mestia tripled in 2012 from the year before, which was already a record year. This is Mestia's new airport. Nice design, isn't it? It was built to allow tourists to be skiing in the mountains and then flying down to the coast and swimming in the same day. Nice idea in principle. But this airport is deserted. There are no flights scheduled for this summer at least, though the operator says talks are underway. In any case, internal flights to and from Mestia are frequently delayed or cancelled, thanks to the altitude, terrain and unpredictable weather. For the time being, all tourists must come by road. Coming up, not a flight, but a three-hour bumpy ride to Europe's highest village. And find out what connects the Voyager space shuttle and these guys. Dawn in the subalpine region of Swanetti in the northwest of Georgia. Traditional stone towers stand guard on the snow capped landscape. Behind them, the Caucasus mountain range, with the Big Bear, Russia, looming just over the other side. Question. How many Georgian polyphonic singers can you fit into a minivan? Answer, well, clearly a countless number, but what's a polyphonic singer? Well, I'm about to find out very quickly. It's only one of Georgia's most famous cultural exports, so valued that a recording was taken up in the Voyager spacecraft in 1977 as an example of mankind's contribution to the universe. And so ancient, this music predates the birth of Christ by several centuries. <laughs> Titko Zertvanetsky Gauss, Magram, Salen Lamazi Melodia, Salen Guparsta, Seltwat, Patius Sent, Radgarats, S. Simrebi, Zalian Didia Sakisa, Esasati, Imaze Metpolevs, Romes Simrebi, Aris, Sainteresuda, Argi, Ratsuko did Hans Horus, Simreda. Can I teach to you? Yeah, yeah, please, please, please. Very good, very good. Gaul Gauhedo, together with it. War 
religion, hunting and everyday life are the most common themes of the songs. Again. Yes, OK, I may need a bit of polishing, but all this practice makes the three-hour journey up just 27 kilometres of bumpy dirt track whiz by. A dirt track that is about to be turned into a proper road very soon. Arguably the highest village in all of Europe, Ushguli. After a long, bitter winter, it's bracing itself for change. Improved access to this remote settlement over the next few years will mean more tourists and hikers, and also better access to market towns, important for people who rely on selling potatoes and dairy produce for their staple income, like Natella and her husband, who also run a guest house. Natella, hi. Zamtarshi, <laughs> If it's such a hard life here, what makes you want to stay? Why don't you, you go down to Mestir at least and, and have a, a better life, materially anyway? Now resplendent in traditional Georgian national dress, the choir is ready. Julie Andrews, eat your heart out. The hills are indeed alive with the sound of music. But could all that harmony be about to collapse? Here we go. The group, called Rico, now enjoys a global profile, travelling the world from Australia to France to showcase Swanetti's UNESCO-recognised musical heritage. Oh, amazing, fantastic, again, <laughs> one more. And on that note, see what I did there, it's time to leave subalpine Swanetti and head west just a few hours towards the subtropical Black Sea coast. This is Batumi, where the emphasis is on fun and glamour. So from the subalpine to the faintly ridiculous. It's hard to believe that just a decade ago, this was a dilapidated old town run by a corrupt autocrat. Today, hundreds of millions of dollars are being pumped into turning it into a tourist trap. Hit and miss, I'd say. Not so long ago, sewage leaks, lack of fresh water and electricity blackouts were the norm. Now locals call this the city of love and travel journalists have begun to brand it the Las Vegas of the Black Sea coast. And just like Vegas, Batumi is beginning to do a roaring trade in last minute weddings. Hello, Batumi please. 
Taco has studied tourism management and she recognises how dramatically her adopted city has been transformed recently. And guess what? She's about to get married. Here, of course. Ger ikidan gamom dinare rom chay meogli aris batumidan da nurom tar opeli obatumeli zaira lamazi kalaki aris zalian lamazi ger zhua shemte gravis ola peri zalian da debiti aris am kalakshi da ravit si qarulis kalaki aris. 300 guests are arriving for the festivities. A Georgian wedding is a classic expression of what it is to be, well, Georgian. Uh, and now all those plans are about to become reality. It's Saturday and a bumper day for nuptials. Twelve knots will be tied at this registry office alone, but one couple steal the limelight. Maybe it's because there's a TV crew following them about. Special guests from all over the globe are attending, and I've been invited as well. <laughs> Batumi's reputation is spreading, and couples have come from as far afield as Italy and the US just to get hitched. Sakartoloshi, Bolot Lebiscan Molo, but she's talking about Imat, a court in Epistina Mikam, but whom shall but imit Omram, a Haliga Ketabulis Kalaki, every tourist sees it does, as a Sakartos, what the spot would have been Modian, Trentan, Registratis, Tresaris, Poti, Ozurgetit, Pilis, Rustavi, Arabs in Shnova, Albat imit Omram, Sakurto Kalaki. And after church and the religious wedding rituals, a rousing reception. So, the union has been sealed and celebrations go on long into the night. And it's a new start for Georgia, the nation too. I've seen three very different faces of how tourism here is the big hope for the future. Inside that golden triangle, Georgia can resemble a developing country, and many people here are frustrated by the current state of inertia. But this is a relatively stable period in Georgia's history, and maybe all it needs to do right now is to quietly build up its confidence and its international reputation. Certainly, as far as I'm concerned, Georgia has an awful lot going for it. Then again, they could launch a charm offensive in typically Georgian style. The Georgians are famous for their hospitality, but be warned, saying no is often not an option, especially when it comes to the traditional toasting ritual with Georgian wine. <laughs> <laughs> 